Okay, I think we're, uh, we're we're up and running here, folks. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, uh, let me see here. Are we up and running? We're up and running. Up and running. Yeah, we're up and running. Okay, got the recording, and we got you on Facebook, and uh, we got a bunch of people already who are waiting here to come on. So let's see who they are. Uh, let me see here. First of all, let me just. Uh, Admit all. Okay. There we go. This is our initial group. We expect more probably coming here anytime soon. Uh, there's uh, Edward Berger. Hello, Edward. With the good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Where are you again, Edward? Flushing. Flushing. Okay. And uh, over there is uh, Steve Bender. And we got Mike Chisholm. And we got Jeff Stein, and we're about to be joined by Rick Sheckman. Here he comes, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, our old pal, Becky. <clears throat> How are you today, all of you? Good, good, good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see here. I'm just trying to get everything all uh, nice and perfect here. Uh, it's, a, it's a very pretty Monday here in New York. I was going to go for a walk, but I didn't have time because I was too busy watching Lucifer. So, uh, you know, you, you got through all of them, right, Rick? Yeah. Yeah. What episode are you on at this point? I have two left. Okay. So you now know who the, who the girl with the um, wings is. Oh, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't remember what episode that was. I thought it was five or I don't know. I think, doesn't that start really revealing itself in the first episode? No. Uh, no, she doesn't tell them who she is. Well, she doesn't tell so, them who she is, but she's still, in the first episode. But that's she what I'm saying. Yeah, she doesn't say who she is. Right. Where you think she's the villain for the season or whatever? You know, most of the people on this group don't even know what we're talking about, right? That's How true. many here watch Lucifer? Anybody? Well, I, I would have thought at least Mike Chisholm watched Lucifer. It's on our list. We've got huh? such a big list, though, so we haven't seen it yet. We are almost on the good well, place. Though, move it to the last top. Well, oh, well, you have you watched all the seasons so far? Of good place? No, of uh, Lucifer. Not yet. No, it's oh. on our list. Then you got to start at the very beginning. And that's a long haul because the first two seasons are like twenty-two episodes each. Yeah, and it's six seasons. And it's six seasons. Yeah. But it, it seems to be going in, I think, a good direction to end it all, you know. Yeah, well, that's what I said to you. Yeah. It ends nicely, if you want to call it. this is the last season of Lucifer, and it's got to it's gotta end, you know. And you know, it's got it, an end, and it's satisfying, if you think that's satisfying, and move on. Yeah, what? Uh, how many? But how many real satisfying last episodes have there been in television? Oh, there's always Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the worst episode ever. <laughs> in fact, on your show, on the on the Letterman show, you did uh, uh, a bunch of um, uh, what was it on the last show? He had a lineup of people, and what was the? Uh, Oh, uh, yeah, I think Elaine, I think, um, what's her name? Um, yeah, well, it was Julie Louis-Dreyfus, uh, something about uh, What the hell thing. was that? It's, uh, okay, so Julie Louis-Dreyfus is on the top 10. Yeah, and, uh, well, what, and what was the top her, 10? What was her, the top her, her line was, thanks again for letting me part of another disappointing series finale. <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld, like this. And then they take a shot of Seinfeld and he, of course, winces. Yeah, that was gold. That I don't really know what they uh, what uh, Larry David was thinking up with that last episode, but I don't think he cared. I don't think he cared. I, I think, think yeah, I think they just wanted to wrap it up. <laughs> just just get out. Well, I think there was such an anticipation. What, what's going to happen in the last episode that the pressure is on? What do you do? What do you do? Do you kill them all? Is there an atomic bomb blast them in Manhattan? You know, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? How do you end it? There's no way to end it. So right. fuck them. I'll just end it in a disappointing way. I think you just end it on a normal episode. You know, my cake is a normal episode. Yeah. I think they swung fences and they just they just uh, hit it in the dirt. Like, I, I think I they thought really the uh, I thought the uh, uh, the Letterman last episode was perfect. You know? Yeah. 
you know, uh, because but that's also after we came up with so many insane ideas of what we were going to do for that last episode. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like my uh, my idea and that we looked into it, we were going to run the show on every screen in Times Square. Wow. Holy oh, shit. Awesome. Live. Man. Live. It would have been live at six five thirty. Awesome. Wow. And then it was like, you know what that's going to cost, number one. And then there was the thing about having like a blimp going over the field. There were all kinds of ridiculous ideas. And eventually Dave just said, no, here's what we're doing. Thank you. And what you did is the last, if I remember correctly, the last uh, seven minutes or so of the show wasn't even the studio show. It was a, no, it was Gaines's uh, montage. Yeah. And that was it. Did he even say goodbye? Oh, yeah. Yes. He, did. he said thank you. Last words were thank you and good night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, but a send off for a show like that is very different for, than a sitcom, right? Mm. Yeah. And again, even that montage, the original, again, I'm telling tales out of school, the original idea was to get that guy who did all the Academy Award montages, mm. whatever his name is. I can't yeah, think of the right yeah, moment. Yeah, I, I know who you know, pay him half a million dollars to make the montage. And we looked at what he was like a rough cut and it was like ah. yeah let's yeah. have barbara do it but it's a question of how do you say goodbye you know and and a lot of the i mean like for instance uh the sopranos everybody's still mixed on the soprano you know johnny's final episode and i'm not you know those final years of carson i found but it was a good episode yeah, yeah he just did it himself he just sat on a chair you know on a stool and basically mm. did it himself yeah, I thought Dave's speech, though, at the end was way better than Johnny's. No offense to Johnny. And I know Dave has reverence for all that. But I thought Dave's was way, way, way better than Johnny Carson's. Um, I, th I thought it was I thought it was a perfect show. I've seen it yeah. on, on YouTube again. And I said, this is a pretty perfect way to say goodbye. You know, we didn't have the damn pet tricks and all that crap we could have stuck in there. Yeah, but let, let's get to the Sopranos. The mm -hmm. Sopranos was the one which it was so mixed. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great. I loved it. <laughs> well, I thought what it did was it was kind of giving a finger to the audience. <laughs> you know, like you're expecting something here, and we're going to let you just not even get an answer. Mm. You know, I, I thought it was. I thought you did get the answer. I mean, I agree. I think so too. Right? You see, those guys come in, goes to black. It's over, you know. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but if they wanted to do it two years later, they could have. It, they could have. Well, they're not dead. Right. They they're could have. Done that. that would have been disappointing. That would have been more disappointing than the end. But that's we, normally what these shows end up doing. A couple yeah. years later, when these people can't get work, right? We're back. Oh, oh, Breaking Bad's a great example of that, right? Because Breaking Bad, I love that finale. But then El Camino comes out a couple years later, and so they did give themselves a little bit of wiggle room. To put El Camino out. Breaking Bad was a Yeah, but I never even watched El Camino. You mm -hmm. mean there's Marjorie. We really should we watch, watch it. It's it's kind of another episode of Breaking Bad, right? It's the uh I would say that it's the afterward. I wouldn't even qualify it as a, a great breaking bad episode, but it does tie up kind of every loose end. It's, it's kind of an afterward. Okay, so it's the epilogue. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah. yeah. You know, but then there was that show, and I can't think of the name right this. Oh, Dexter. Guess oh. what? It's back this year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He somehow wound up. Uh, how did he? Did, how did the other one end? I, can't I never remember. watched it, so I don't know. How did it? Oh. Does anybody remember? Do you remember Edward? Anybody? His sister came back, and it was just it, it, the last season. I did not like that last season of Dexter at all. Left a sour taste in my mouth completely. Yeah, but then the two years, three years, whatever, years later. Oh, we need work. Let's do another. Let's do another season of Dexter. Because yeah. people love Dexter. Now they don't. Well, I don't know. I loved it that much. You know, I liked it. But yeah, but are you, you going to watch the new one? Or no, maybe I, give it I, an episode? I, I felt it went too long. You know, it, it, you know, it, it outstayed its welcome. Yes. But, and some shows outstay their welcome because they just don't have the writing ability. Uh, yep. in, in the in the series i mean lucifer we could say because of six season could have outstayed its welcome but it was pretty good throughout the whole series you know because only because they were being canceled every season right so they never you know yeah yeah they never same with same with like buffy it had its ups and downs but 
on the whole, it was a pretty damn good well, show. I haven't seen the end. I of, love Buffy. I haven't seen the end of Lucifer yet, Shecky. Do they leave it open so they could do more? <laughs> I guess in theory. Okay. Yeah. Well, nothing dies in television. You can always bring it back with some excuse. <laughs> But this is why you know, I... let's let's play again not to spoil it for you there are quote no bodies in coffins at the end right uh steve you were saying something i'm not gonna say this is why i've become a huge fan of the mini series you know the limited series where yes, it's yes. more than a movie but you don't have to commit your whole life to the damn thing i totally <laughs> agree with you absolutely you, you don't get very many of those no i don't know they're, they're, they're they're usually they say, good. Oh, this, is, this is a, mi a limited mini series and then it's very popular, so it suddenly... And then they do <laughs> season two of the limited <laughs> miniseries. I think, um, I think American television learned its lesson, um, like, like with a series called Lost. Like Lost. Oh, if God. Lost really did have a beginning, a middle, and an end, it would have been phenomenal. But in seasons like four and five there, <laughs> Dick Lindelof it even talked about how... Well, there's a about they didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah, yeah. Talk about jumping in the shark, man. Oh, man. No, it's, it's, a, it's the point at which they, they get on the stage and all they know how to do is just start tap dancing. And the network <laughs> says, we want more, we want more, we want more. Yeah, we but want the, more. And middle end is so much better. Episode, so, hey, fine, we'll do another season. Exactly. Well, you, you know, you're going to turn it down. Mm -hmm. the, to begin with, you're going get, to get a de definitely get a raise. You know, yeah. you're gonna get more money, all the actors and an executive producer money. credit, and then you get to direct an episode. And and, then you, and to... you know why they finally stopped doing them? Because the network says, you know, we've renewed this so many times and given so many raises to so many people. We can't afford. We it. can't afford it anymore. That's and, how it comes. And to again, an end. what is that show done in syndication? Nothing. Have you ever seen Lost in syndication? I haven't even seen it wind up on like Netflix or Hulu. No, so I mean, therefore. Yeah, the idea Plus. is to get syndication, and that's where Big Bang Theory makes a fortune, or Seinfeld. This show, nothing lost. No, but half-hour shows are very saleable to television. Yeah. Seinfeld, yeah, but like a Dallas. Dallas, good show, but you kind of know how it ended. So why do you want to watch season did three say, of twelve? Did you say? Uh, did somebody here say that? I felt uh, going to Netflix. Lost is somewhere. Lost yeah, is somewhere. Up in Canada. But see, in Canada, our wait, Disney wait, Plus. Wait, 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 wait. Where, where is oh. Lost? Disney Plus and the Star section in here up here in Canada. It is. Yeah. Well, I, I that, we may not get it here on Disney Plus. So, so that means you probably get Hulu because we don't have Hulu up here, right? So right. I, well, here Star. Hulu, Hulu, you can buy in conjunction with Disney. Yeah. Like a so whole probably... package that and the ESPN. Plus. Yeah, but then again, who's watching Lost on Disney when you if you could even find it among their you know, 5,000, whatever they run. Yeah. Like I read today, good news. Cruella is now available on Disney for free. Oh, I can't wait to go watch that tonight. <laughs> well, I already watched it. <laughs> and it's not bad. It's not but, good, but it's not. You saw it with me, didn't you, Marjorie? What was it? Cruella DeVille. Cruella. She doesn't remember any movie she watches anymore. They're all like, she watches so much. She's just lying there all day watching movies and it's series and everything. Like, and they all like, become a pate, a mental yeah, pate. One flows into the other. <laughs> I just checked. Lost is on Hulu here. It is on <laughs> Hulu here. Okay. Okay, but none of us knew it and none of us care. Right. Right. That's right. And probably so it's not over like they Hulu, they're going, well, let's you know, see who's doing it. they got a billion what. dollars to run it, not, run it on Hulu. Yeah. But they but probably at Hulu, they're looking at it and going, gee, two people watch Lost this month. You know, uh, but they own it. So Disney owns it, don't they? Yeah. Because ABC. Yeah. So fine. We own it. We might as well just, you know, run it. Big deal. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, a lot of the endings are just not satisfying. I remember it goes all the way back to the fugitive, which didn't have a satisfying ending. You know, you can't. did anybody like Mash? Did you guys like Mash the oh, finale? Oh, oh, here was the here here was the problem. Here was the problem with with look, hold on a second with the fugitive. Okay. He finds the guy, and he gets let off at the end. Okay, yes. 
after years of chasing the guy, he one episode, he catches him and they say, oh, you're innocent. Uh, go have a good life. Right. Right. <laughs> so the problem is it died. Nobody wanted it after that for syndication. Right. It never had a life in syndication. Right. Because they had so wrapped it up. They and everybody knew it. what was going to happen. It was over with, you know? You know, where shows like, let's say, The Untouchables, Naked City, whatever, because they were kind of anthologies. They had a life in syndication. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and people wanted to watch them over and over and over again. Because it was not, quote, a continuing storyline that the final episode had some kind of... And that, by the way, was the last time that any TV series ever completely... So if there was a problem that was a running problem throughout the thing, and that's why you don't see Lost anymore, because they finally say, oh, this, well, what was it? Oh, it was all a fever dream or something. I can't remember what the, what the reasoning was. Well, that was like St. Elsewhere, if you remember oh. that final one where apparently it was a kid's um, snow globe, the whole show. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I, like I, I, never, I never watched that. It was an autistic life. child's snow globe. And that's where the whole five, six seasons took place. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, and had that do in syndication. Um, best really ending, one of the best endings ever was the second, the, the second, third New Heart show. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah, that was the that second was New Heart show. Yep. The whole clap. <laughs> Super where the fun. whole series has been a dream and he wakes up in bed with the wife from the first series. <laughs> <laughs> and also, that was a bit of an F you to Mary Fran, the wife of the second series. Oh, really? Well, she was apparently one of the most disliked people huh. in Hollywood. Really? Wow. And unfortunately, she's no longer with us, so I don't want to speak ill of the dead. But, but... She, was, she was hated on that show. I don't know why they don't, if they really find somebody like that, that they can't stand, they don't just kill them off and put in another character. Well, like I just read the other day, and I never watched the show. You remember the real McCoys, the Walter yeah. Brennan show? Walter Brennan. Yeah. <laughs> there was one year before it went off the air, Richard Long's wife on the show was killed off because they didn't want it, they didn't like her. <laughs> and she was causing trouble on the set so all of a sudden they come back and he's now a widow widower there was, there was a soap opera called young dr malone taken from a radio program that had existed for years but young dr malone wasn't doing very well as a soap opera so they they decided to bring it to a close you know what they did Last episode, the entire cast, all the characters, decide they're going to go on a picnic, and they rent a bus. And, and the bus, bus goes over a cliff. And that's oh my God. The end of, am I right, Shecky? Oh, God. I vaguely remember that. I think, wasn't that, maybe I'm wrong on this. I feel like it was Bob Hastings was one of the stars of that. Mm -hmm. Who eventually was on McHale's Navy, among other things. And on Monday, I don't know, it was Days of Our Lives or something. They brought on a new series. Um, but I mean, that, that it, I'll tell you the best story I ever heard. Jada, what was her name? Jada, oh, sure. Pinkett? Pinkett. No, 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 Jada. Oh, God. But anyway, uh, she was a, um, uh, a what do you call it? A soap opera star. Uh, and she was, I think, on Guiding Light, if I'm not mistaken. I may be wrong. But she was going with my friend Paul Krasner, and she told him the story about how on one episode, they had this, this, they, the scene was, uh, and a lot, by the way, a lot of these actors, Kelly Highland, a lot of these actors came from uh, uh, Broadway. Well, they were being done live in the afternoon, yeah. so then they would be yeah. on Broadway at night. Yeah, and uh, hmm. this show went out live every day. And uh, the guy uh, who was there, they're doing a scene on an airplane, sitting in their seats and they're talking. And in the middle of one of his lines, he forgets the line. Now, what do you do on Broadway when you forget a line? Well, someone prompts you usually. And how do you get a prompt usually? Yeah. You usually sometimes make an excuse to walk off stage. And then somebody gives you the prompt. And then they give you the prompt. And then everything's fine because you got like a brain fart, right? 
So he can't remember his next line. So he says, hold on a moment. I have to go to the restroom. And he gets up and walks out the door of the plane. <laughs> and they, they, go, they immediately go to black to a commercial. I like that. The, the audio from the director <laughs> is the director saying, now, Martha, when we come back, you're going to cry like you've never cried before. <laughs> and they wrote him out of the show. He wrote himself out of the show by walking out the wrong door. <laughs> wow. So, you know, we talked about changing horses in midstream with actors. The only one I could think of, right, is Bewitched, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Dick York was very ill. Yeah, he hurt his back, right, making a movie. And was on painkillers and, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Has, has that ever happened before in the major series for the, the actors well change. the burns and allen show had right. four okay. harry harry mortons you know okay. ben adaret's husband okay. fresh one prince of whom, one of whom they had to get rid of because he was in red channels yeah john well, brown they, they did it with the beckys on uh the connor whatever roseanne right mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah well, that's gonna, happened what were you gonna say mike or, or don't forget there's a season where donna reed replaced barbara bell gettys on dallas right huh. I just said in the modern era, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air did it with, uh, with Vivian. But um, I mean, the interesting one to me, when I think about what we're talking about now is Three's Company. The way that right. what they did with Ben Summers, right? Like how they would, they kind of- We had a new Chrissy type character next year. Yeah, right. right. No, no character. On, but, on, on, no, 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 no. But on the way out, Charlie, Char they, were, they were so the like this. Band, they was, just replaced the actors. Except no, no, no. characters, so, supposed to be the same character, but they're different actors plays her. But the last year of, of Suzanne Summers being on there, they would shoot scenes of her on the telephone where she wasn't talking to any of the other actors, and they would just shoot that and they would insert it into the actual show because none of the other actors wanted to be around Suzanne Summers. So she was still in the show, but she was outside of any of the other actors for. I forget how long. It was either half a season or the remainder of a season. And that was interesting how they did that because of the personality stuff. Were you going to say something, Charlie? Hmm. No, I was just saying uh, they, they, they had actually replaced the character that, with the different actors to play the character for the, for the daughters of, of, of Tim Allen and, uh, and Last Man Standing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, also going back to Bewitch for one quick second, when Alice Pierce, who played Gladys Kravitz, got cancer, they replaced her with Sandra Gould. Right. Same character, but a different actress. Yeah. And did uh, did, uh, did Alice Pierce then at that point die? She died very quickly after that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Only, I think, in her early 40s. She was very young. Ooh. Wow. wow. Too young. Yeah. It's sad. But... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but no, I mean, that's, you know, that's what happens. Yeah, that's interesting that, like, members of rock bands and things get changed and replaced all the time, but it doesn't happen that often in TV shows. Yeah, David Lee Roth, you know, gets replaced right. by, was it, Sammy Hagar? Or whatever. Yeah, Sammy Hagar, yeah. Right. right. Did you guys see David Lee Roth? He best, the best gets replaced by Ringo, you know. Yep. Yeah. And then you got ACDC. When, they, when Bon Scott died, then they had put in, what is Brian Johnson as a? Brian Johnson, yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, you know, but uh, this, and now we're on to rock groups that replace people. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a lot of easier rock groups. It is they come easier. and go. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, but that's an iconic saying. If you're listening to Van Halen with David Lee Roth, it's, you know, that's Van Halen. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I love Van Halen. Brian Jones, then Mick Taylor, then Ron Wood, right? In the Stones. In the Stones at yeah. work, though. In the Stones at work, but he's right about uh, about about uh, what uh, Van Halen. Yeah, but it just never quite worked. Without. Oh, it did for them. I mean, oh, it worked at the time. Yeah, I mean, Hagar, the Van Halen was huge. They were probably bigger. You they, know, were. they were. They were. They, they sold more records. For sure. Yeah, not as um, good in my estimation, but they were huge. I mean, I love Sammy. I mean, he's great, you know, but he's got his own career and he does great stuff on his own. He doesn't need to be with, you know, Eddie Van Halen, who, yeah. you know, was to me the best guitar player ever. In fact, I have, where is it, sitting right here? Uh, I have a guitar pick that he handed me at a concert. Nice. <laughs> now, you don't have to show us to prove it. 
<laughs> oh, here it is. Oh, geez. Yeah, I, want to, I want to see it. <laughs> I have an old thing. He has a train. Okay, it's a pick. It says, uh, it says something weird on it. Something about a monk. What does it say? Uh, oh, I can't read it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, he handed it to me after a concert. I was like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, David Lee Plot was on the VMAs last night. He did the, the very one? last award. Who was? I'm sorry. David Lee Roth was on the MTV Video Music oh. Awards. Oh, was he really? He's a mess. <laughs> 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 what happened to that? I'm looking for something here. I can't find it. Hold on a second. Here it's not true. True. All right. I'll, 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 so I don't know. Like I've, we got a lot of New Yorkers here. I was curious. Do any of you care about the MTV Video Music Awards anymore? Or are they completely? No, never, never did. I never, never cared world. about them 20 right. years ago. Yeah, I didn't so care about them 20 now. years ago. And care okay. less about them now, even though I didn't care at all 20 years oh, ago. Oh boy, Madonna showed up. <laughs> with with her hands <laughs> hanging out. So that show has been a big deal to me since I was a kid because I'm an MTV. I'm an MTV kid, right? So last night was year forty of these things, and having Cindy Lauper on there and Madonna and like Busta Rhymes and oh, a and bunch Dave of Scott. seven year old women, great. <laughs> and, you know, some of those names you it's hear like these names, special. I don't even know who they are. <laughs> I didn't you know, know who most of the people on that show were. I was excited because the Foo Fighters were on it. And I like 21 Pilots and I like the alternative stuff, Machine Gun Kelly. But other than that, I didn't even know who any of these people were. And, and, and not that I watched that. It's weird not caring what all the kids right. care. I don't right. even know the names that you just mentioned. Right. You don't know the Foo Fighters? <laughs> you know, or like today, I'm looking in the New York Post and there's, you know, pictures of, I guess it was Khloe Kardashian and her baby daddy. And it's like <laughs> at the awards last night. Who gives a blank about either of them? Yeah. <laughs> Too many people is the answer to that. Too many saw, people. Yeah. <laughs> they, they announced the cast of Dancing with the Stars. Not that I watch it. My wife does. I never heard and, of any one of them. And I never <laughs> heard of any of those fucking people at all. It's like, <laughs> what, are we, what are there, nine people in this grid right now? We all could be on Dancing with the Stars <laughs> next year. We're as famous as they are. Oh, you haven't gotten your call yet? They called me yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> But do you care any more about the Grammys than you care about the MTV Awards? No. No, because they're phony. They're phony awards. They're like, you know, Alice will hear me. I always go off on the Golden Globes. I know where it is. Yeah. 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 Yes, right? You know, 70 waiters in, in Hollywood give out awards to them, you know. <laughs> I think it's what? in the other room in a, in a uh, drawer. I think uh, Jeff wants to say something. Yeah, <laughs> the place that I watched TV uh, yesterday yeah. was the Mets and the Yankees. There you go. I, I don't know. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, but it's four goddamn hours. <laughs> yeah, it is. You really had to get serious. And it was the you one know, Mets game I didn't. A baseball game lasted an hour and 45 minutes. Right. That was, that was the one Mets game I didn't watch because it's been so painful. So I didn't watch it. It started like an amazing game. Yeah, I don't watch no, it. I watch it because it's on ESPN, Sunday Night Baseball. Well, I'm not staying up till one in the morning to watch the Yankees win or lose. Right. right. Anyone watch tennis? What? Well, uh, no, I've had enough of. I've had enough with this current era of tennis. <laughs> oh, I love this year's Open was oh. great. Wait a minute. Why watch have, tennis? Why have you had it, Jackie? What? Why have you had it with tennis? Because it's all about gambling now. I think I said to you on the <laughs> phone that young American black woman, Sloane Stevens got like a thousand death threats after she lost. She's not the greatest player in tennis history. So who's sending her death threats? People who probably bet on her and lost money. Yeah. Half the, half the ads on the NFL yesterday were for DraftKings. Well, it's always like, you know, the official sponsor of the New York Yankees, DraftKings. Right. You know, really? uh, FanDuel, the official sponsor of the... Yeah, but who? That's Pete Rose. Caesars is using um, uh, J.B. Smoove and uh, oh. uh, what's his name? Uh, my friend. <laughs> Bobby? Hmm? The Bobby? No, played the mouse in Ratatouille, this guy. Uh, oh, Patton Oswalt? Patton Oswalt. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the Patton one that's Smith. doing the casino ads? And I, I really think, you know, in years past, we wouldn't advertise liquor in, on television, right? 
it was against yeah. the law. I, I think we can now, but it was against yeah. the law. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it isn't against the law to advertise sports book. Yeah. Because at the end of it, it says, if you, have, if you and someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800. Yeah, but I mean, little letters <laughs> that really you can't read if you're too busy trying to bet. You know, I mean, you know, like yesterday, there was a game, I think it was Cleveland, Kansas City, and I don't know what the line was, but Kansas City won, I think, by three points. I'll make a bet they didn't beat the line. Therefore, people were probably pissed that Kansas City didn't win them money, but the, right. Kansas City won the goddamn game. Well, the right. thing is, it got, I, it's got I, me pissed that they are even being allowed to advertise yeah. these sports books and that they are allowed to do it like they do it online. You that, know, and it's that, like you have the announcer on ESPN radio. Well, I like on Sunday the uh, New York Giants versus whoever the hell they're playing. You know, that's where I'm going to bet at DraftKings or FanDuel or whatever, you know, whatever. It's, it's like my dad always said, it's not whether you win or lose, it's the point spread. <laughs> That's right. You know, if you, if you like, like, a true if you like Kansas City versus Cleveland, Kansas mm -hmm. City pulled out the game. I think that's wonderful if you're a fan of Kansas City. The fact that they didn't beat the spread, oh my God. Well, the 49ers were up by 28 points yesterday and only won by eight, and the line right, was eight and a half. Like 21 so. points in the fourth yeah, quarter. But here, here, here's the deal. You know, families' lives are ruined by gambling. And I, I, I know that a gambler is going to go out of his way to gamble no matter what. But why make it so easy that he can get on the goddamn, on the goddamn computer and lose all that money? Just to, yeah. I mean, I could go online right now and lose everything I've got. Yeah. No, you can't because you're in New York. Well, if I suddenly <laughs> was in New Jersey. If you for, drove over to the UWB, you could go over and bet. Your phone will pick it right up. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, a friend of mine was in Nevada and tried to bet on his phone on DraftKings, and it said, no, nah, I can't do it. it, it but in New Jersey, you can. So if you, as but, I say, go over the bridge. Yeah. yeah, but wait a minute. If your phone number is a New York phone number. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, location. it's geo-tracking. The geo-tracking number it, it knows where you're at. Wow. Uh, yeah. Knows where and there are people who drive over the GWB and spend 20 bucks back and forth for the tolls so they can place their bets. Yeah. I know people who do it. To... And place their bets. Right. I know people who do it to buy weed, which makes a lot more sense than <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know. Yeah. But no, I mean, it's just, you know, again, I don't, if the Yankees lose, they've lost. I don't care if the betting line, whatever it might have been. Well, I want to ask Len, since he's the only one on today from California. I wonder where, what's his name is today? He usually always calls. But, uh, Who, Brian? No, not Brian. Um, Go ask your question. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> Len, have you voted uh, yet? I did. And did yeah. you um, vote to kick the guy out? Uh, I did not. <laughs> Good. Good. Um, because um, the, the people that are running are just, that Larry Elder guy is bat. Oh my shit. God! Crazy. Did you hear what he said yesterday? He About wants the slave he, owners. A couple of weeks ago, that was last week. I'm sorry. He said, um, I, "I think that reparations should be paid." Yes. To the yeah. slave owners. Slave owners. Yeah. No, no, for owners. slave owners. No, yeah. for slave for slavery, it, yeah. it should be paid to slave owners who lost property. Right. Yeah. <laughs> really? It is a yeah. black you man. You know. Can you imagine? Can't make this. Yes, but we already know that the vote is fixed because Donald Trump told us that. Well, the Republicans are already saying that if they lose, it's fixed. Well, that's their line now, right? Of course. That's what they said. Prefixed. Trump started saying that three months before the election. Yeah. Is every election going to be like that? And the other thing I read was that since 1960, every single governor of California has had recall papers filed against them, whether or not they actually went through or not, which they generally didn't. But and it's every, always and it's always been a democratic governor, right? Of course. Yes. Yeah. I mean he's, he's gonna stay though. I mean it looks now like it's like oh, of course. Like but when are they in California, when are they gonna say this recall stuff, we, we have to make it so it can't happen. It needs to be a little harder. I mean it shouldn't <laughs> well, be. It shouldn't be. If I've got twenty five hundred bucks years. I can run. 
I don't know. Yeah, but certain, certain people are making money on the recall vote, so it's never going to get voted out because then they're not going to get their money. I think this cost us $120 million. Whoa, it's oh, it's right oh, in. $320 And where, does that mo- where is that million. money going? Where's it go? I don't know where it's going. I know it's coming from my pocket, at least some of it. <laughs> Shouldn't you re- re- redress your buyer's remorse if you have it at the next election? Yeah. Right? Yes. You know? Yes. That's how the system Both the works. gentleman out of office or lady out of office. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if the guy shoots somebody in Central Park, you know, okay. maybe we should get rid of him. But, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, it, it's just I, I think it, it costs California way too much money. And, and it's a waste. It, he's, he can't govern because he's out campaigning. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's ridiculous. Or having dinner at the French Laundry. Or having dinner at the French Laundry for $1,000 ahead. Well, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that was, was that the, re, that wasn't the reason why they recalled him. It was, it was the, in fact, yes, it, it was. was the cat, that was, was the catalyst. It. it was the catalyst. That's what started, that started the whole thing. thing. Well, actually, no, he was, the day he was elected, they started the recall petitions. Well, the day before he had said he had done the mask mandate stuff, and then right. he's at the French Laundry the next day without a mask on with ten people. Well, it's, yeah. it's like Marjorie Taylor Greene filing articles of impeachment against Biden. Yeah. What for? It yeah, doesn't matter. It's just yeah, something really. she has to do because she's who she is. That piece of garbage. You know, there should be a penalty somewhere along the line when people waste <laughs> our time like that. In other words. If, if, they, if they can go ahead and do it, but if they don't win, then they have to like pay for the election <laughs> or do something. Yeah, but like this that. has been happening since 70, 1783. This is nothing new. What, the recall in California? No, <laughs> just in general. Oh, feels like it. You know, I lost, you know, this is blah, 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 you know. Well, I'm voting to have a king. And leave it at that. Then we don't have to have any any problems. You know, it's like in China, if they want to build a railway from northern China to Beijing, two weeks done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two yeah. weeks done like that. Because all that happens is the leader, the chairman, says build it, and that's it. I mean, they're much more efficient. That's where they've got it over us. Well, we can't fix a pothole. You know, so. We can't fix a pothole without a committee. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, we you know, as you know, our mayor two weeks ago didn't realize a hurricane was on its way here. Really? You know, when um, Ida came in the other day. I watched him today with his press conference. What a dope. <laughs> what an absolute out now. Am I right, Steve? I don't even know what to make of the guy. I can't, you know, it's, yeah, it seems like he should be a lot smarter than he is. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he tries, but he's smart enough to steal money. Right. And he tries to always prove how hip he is, yeah. you know, like I listen to this rock music and yeah. I listen, you know, and that and this and so on, you know, I married a black woman. Yeah. Look at me how And then went I to am. Cuba on my honeymoon. Aren't I wonderful? Has he done anything other than universal pre-K? I mean, that's his own one thing that he did. Universal hey. pre-K? Yeah. Pre-kindergarten. Pre-kindergarten yeah. school. Yeah. And that was a good thing. But other than that, I can't think of anything. Either. I thought pre-K was a new post serial. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I'm... now he's gonna run for governor because guess what? He gets eight to one matching dollars from all his crooked friends. Hmm. And uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Giuliani gave a speech the other night. You sent me a copy of it, Rick. You probably see yeah. that. Yeah. That was insane. He was drunk off his ass. It seems. Yeah. Like. <laughs> oh no, he doesn't drink. He, last time he was drunk, he was in college, according to him yeah. today. And, and Trump and doesn't drink either. I, I had oh, one scotch that evening, and it was watered down. And I'm not even sure I fi- I finished it. Oh. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, you got to know that uh, alcoholics deny their alcoholism, but this is ridiculous. (laughs) And you heard him giving the shout out to Bernie Carrick. I know you heard the beginning of that. Right. It's, you know, it's it's amazing. This is what this country has turned into. (laughs) And and, uh, you you were saying the other day, Shecky, you just don't give a crap anymore. You know? Because this is the way it's been for two again since 1783. Just 
we're more cognizant because we're living through it. And and we have the media, the social media, the the past. And now we have social media. Yes. Yeah. But Trump went on to a wrestling match. No, it was a boxing <laughs> match. It was a, it was a it was a boxing match. Well, uh, where he got millions and millions of dollars. To, you think he was to asked? the second audio? No, you Does didn't. Does that think he was asked? Was the he second really audio? Asked? By the way, how long did the match last? Under one round. <laughs> I heard a minute and a half. Yeah, under Whoa. one round. So his second audio commentary must have been, hello, goodbye. <laughs> well, he did the first three matches between me and you, you know, whoever those people were. Wow. But my he, question is, do you think he was asked to come to the 9-11 ceremony? <laughs> no. I agree. But he showed up at a firehouse. Right. Saturday, I believe. <laughs> oh God. That being said, I'd pay money to see Shecky and Alex uh, in, a, in a in a ring. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do the commentary for free. I'm having yeah. trouble. I'm just having trouble standing up these days. <laughs> that, was very, uh, that was very cool. Your uh, video of going to Ground Zero the other day. That was. Oh, I just was, we I just shot that on my iPhone and I figured I'd just put it up. It's kind of a tribute. Something I want to see. I want to go there. I have not been there. Yet. By the way, that subway station is an amazing hub. architecture. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, from like the outside, bird. it looks like it, a it bird. Like supposed a bird. to look like a bird. You go inside. I took a shot of it from the inside. It's just breathtaking. Wow. And huge. Yeah. Where yeah. Is the, where's so the I, station? I, I want to thank Osama bin Laden. <laughs> yeah, he at that train station. Oh my God. Yeah, the, the Oculus, if I remember the name correctly. <laughs> Oculus is the name. Of it. What is this? It's calling me. Don't they know who you are, damn it? Don't they know I, you're on a ship? Is your car warranty about to expire? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. So, Alex, you were with me when we went down to Ground Zero like the week it opened yeah. and ran into the guy with no heart. The guy with no heart. Oh, Dick Cheney. Oh, Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney, yeah. Oh, Dick Cheney. I was with you, Alex. We're, yeah, we're walking, and I think you what you point. You go like, oh, look, there's Dick Cheney. Yeah. Wait, I was joking. You're serious? It was Dick Cheney? Yeah. I, have, well, yeah. I, have, I, have, I was there. It was like the second or third I have a photograph day of yeah. up yeah. to wow. the public or something. Yeah. And Alex had a way to get us in. I think he was still serious, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, yeah. No, I'm downtown and I've never been. I can't bring myself to do it. It was wow. so horrible down here for so long after that. I just you know can't... something I got to tell you? Uh, you know the old saying about he cleans up well? Uh, New York City cleans up well. Yeah. I mean, that whole area is like, if you figure that 20 years ago that happened. Hmm. But what it is today is very modern and very new. Uh, and even you look at that uh, new building they built and it's, uh, it's you just take your breath away when you stand there, you know. And you know what, and not to, they think they built that in what, the original World Trade Center in 72 or three. Yeah. Yeah. They probably would have knocked it down by now. It had not <laughs> right. down I don't, I don't think so. Like some, yeah. you know, the, like just, the guy would, whoever would, owned it. We would employ would like, oh, we gotta get rid of this and put something new up. No, they're not knocking down the Empire State Building. Yeah. <laughs> or the Sears. Yeah. Nice people don't building. remember this about the World Trade Center. Everybody venerates it. We just went through this. It was a horrible looking building. Oh, horrible. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. However, however, when I came out of the subway and I turned around and saw the World Trade, I knew what where South and North was. I mean, I, <laughs> well, that's it, not a reason for two horrible, unattractive well, buildings. It, it, well, the, it helped me. It helped me know where I was. When I was uh, here, it wasn't here. I don't think. When was it built? When did it go? Early seventies. Early seventies, yeah. I believe. Yeah, I mm -hmm. left here in. Um, and you know, they got rid of all the radio stores and all those little shops that were there. Yeah, yeah, but I left. Well, uh, uh, anyway, when they put it up. Everybody referred to it as the boxes the computers came in. <laughs> you know, everybody thought it was, they were two absolutely ugly, uninspiring buildings. Two giant penises in the air. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually, when they were, when we were taken down by Osama bin Laden and his demolition crew, um, they replaced it 
with stuff that really it has it, a better look. It, you, you, if you go down there and you look at it, it takes your breath away. You know, but that was also that era of the time life building, all those Sixth Avenue buildings mm -hmm. that all had that same look that giant box going to the sky. Yeah, yeah, and glass. Yeah, but I mean, it was, uh, you know, it, it, it's funny. The, the World Trade Center also was it, 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 a wonder that Osama bin Laden went after it, okay? Because it seems as though everybody, it was an object of, of, uh, uh, of obsession. With a lot of people. I mean, we had a guy mm -hmm. get on a tightrope and go between the two buildings. <laughs> that was incredible. And then a couple of years prior to that, you That's had cool. somebody try to bomb it from underneath. Right, right. right. in the parking 90, lot. 93. It was, was almost this giant chip sitting on yeah. America's well, shoulders. It's a perfect, it's a perfect symbol. Arm. It's a yeah. perfect symbol of capitalism, yeah. like giving the finger to the world. Yeah, yeah. two of them. Yeah, yeah two yeah, of them. Fingers yeah. to the world. So every every little um, uh, group in Connecticut and probably New York and New Jersey and whatever, they all have the firemen have a piece of the original buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and they've got pieces of steel and whatever, and everybody has to create a uh, an architecture right. design. And uh, it, well, let me, you know, some of them are interesting. Let me ask Shecky yeah. a question here. Where were you, Shecky, when the second building came down? Oh, boy. I was walking down to Union Turnpike listening to Howard Stern. No, you weren't. No, I called you when the first building came down. I think you called me and while, we, while you were talking to me, the no. second building came down. No, 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 no. I called you around 9 o'clock. Around 9 o'clock? Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I, I actually, I, I think I told, I went and voted. Yes. And when I'm, at, I'm voting and I'm saying, you know what, this vote ain't going to count, but I'm here to vote. <laughs> oh. And then I walked down to Union Turnpike, you know, and the other building came down. Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess I, I, maybe, I guess I can, I can't remember now, maybe the plane had hit it and maybe it hadn't come down yet. No, but it hadn't come down when it yet. Fell, I was walking down. All I know is I remember you calling me, and I mean, oh no, I called you and said you better turn on the TV. You're waking me up, and it's what? It's what time in the morning? Well, it was six a.m. your time. So yeah, so he wakes me up. Oh, really? I go, what? what? What are you calling for, Chick? He says, turn on your TV set. I just turned it on. There it was, and I hmm. said, oh, the World Trade Center is on fire. And he said, no, a plane flew into it. Yeah. And so we figured. You know, bad accident. Yeah, that's what everyone right. thought first, yeah. And, and then, I only called you because I figured you'd want to be able to talk about it on your radio show that day. <laughs> well, no, I, what I did is I got up and put my clothes on, went to the radio station because I know the immediate instinct you have when you're associated with a radio station is something like this happens. You go to the radio station because you know there's going to have to be coverage on it. You know? Right. Right, but then, no, but that's why I called you. It's right. like I just wanted you to be aware, so you didn't wake up well, I could, at nine a.m. I could swear the or, second, you had the early show, so you would have been up. I could swear the second plane hit while you and I were talking. Because you might be right. Because I, I remember down, what so. happened is you called you me and right. said, and I said, Jesus Christ, you know what happened? This car, the plane flew into it. I said, Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, you might, you might. And be then right all about of a sudden, it. the second one happened, and I said, Well, I guess this is no accident. Yeah, you might be right about that, but if the, the second, but the second one fell when I was walking, taking a walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but it still, it was still standing before that. that. Was a couple of hours didn't... later. Yeah. No, it was only about forty minutes later, I think. Yeah. Really? That little yeah. amount of time between the first and the second. It was. The yeah. Building yeah. that went down was the second one that got hit. Right. Well, here's the thing. You would have thought, okay, that as things go that one of those towers might have come down and the other would but they both came down and they came down in the order in which they were hit oh, oh, no. oh. Well, that building was hit second but it fell first yeah. oh really i didn't know that yeah. i didn't know that either yeah mm. the uh watch eight million <laughs> movies about 9 11 so i know that for yeah. a fact Oh, yeah, okay. but you know the, the the internal structure is what held those buildings up. The external is a facade. You know, there's really no structural 
on the outside, like the Empire State Building is structural on the outside because it's made out of brick and stone and whatever. Yeah. But th those buildings were just, you know, they were air, except for the central core that was holding the thing up. Wow. Wasn't it the Empire State Building that got hit by an airplane? Yes, it did. Yeah, the 40, the 46. 46. 40s or something? 46. There was a giant eight on the Empire State Building. <laughs> <laughs> they, they went through that. That was traumatic. <laughs> Right. No, but we what survived. happened? Was the, the, it was a. I think it was a. Just a. a, a it was a navy plane, a, and it was foggy, and it got lost in the fog. Twenty nine. Yeah. And it got stuck in the building. I mean, it did. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was it hanging did. out of the building. You know. Yeah. yeah. The, the first joke I ever heard Louis C.K. tell, which made me realize how brilliant he was, was he said you could gauge how bad a person you are for how long it took you before you masturbated after 9-11. He, <laughs> he said for me, but, but, but he said for me, it was between Tower 1 and Tower 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I could not believe he said that. I thought, what a brilliant joke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of 9-11, um, I have a tradition that I, that I, since I'm a less we forget guy, and uh, for the first few years, every, like clockwork, I would watch the first Late Show the entire thing after the commemorate on 9-11. And then it got pulled off. I've just recently downloaded the whole thing again. So I hadn't watched the entire episode in a few years. And I was fascinated this year watching it on 9-11 because um, Dave's first guest was Dan Rather. And it's interesting watching- And then Regis. In a well, then Regis, which is great, you know, something to make fun of, like Dave said, which is good. But the Dan Rather segments, there was two or three of them, and it was so interesting to see in a 20 year span what a newsman or a newswoman, how they acted then versus how a newsman or a newswoman acts now. I mean, mm -hmm. 20 years is not that long of a time. And they might as well be a different species of person when you look at how Dan, the things that Mr. Rather was saying that night compared to what news anchors say now. It was, yeah. it's, a, it's a really neat thing. If you have a, the opportunity to watch that, it's well, the and Brokaw. I mean, they were smart guys. I think, well, most, I think news, no, most news anchors today are just the eye candy. Right. Yeah. You and, know, and, they're, and they're really now Ken and Barbies. Where right. That started, I think, with Barbie Peter then, really Well, Mar Marjorie and I watch the CBS News every night. And Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just, <laughs> we went over there because of you. Yeah, because I, I didn't. I don't want to watch Lester Holt because he's a. Well, he's, I have to watch. A, I didn't I want to watch to Lester fly, Holt I, because he's a Negro. I have to watch <laughs> Isaac Fly. He's Negro. I didn't even know that. <laughs> but he's no, but I just got tired of him. He was. He had. I don't know. I didn't like he was. So we go over and we watch uh, what's her name over. I don't even know her name. Over at the CBS. The one with the, the eyes with, with oh, wings. Nora, 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 uh, Nora O'Donnell. Yeah, Nora Dunn, you know. <laughs> uh, but she had, you, SNL call her, you call her eye wings, right? She has like eye wings. Eye wings. It's like her eyeballs are going to take off and fly away. Just fly away. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you know, we talked about, I think we said it last week, that, you know, in the 20 years that you just said, Mike, it's that. It went from the news division to the entertainment division. They yes. their entertainment. In the beginning, they couldn't make a profit off of it. Yeah. Well, also, you just don't have people who know really are good news, great news people. You know. You know, there's going to be a hurricane. We're going to send our anchors down there. <laughs> yeah. it's covered just as well up in New York or Washington. Well, I mean, you've got you've got like Rachel Maddow just signed a contract for what thirty five million dollars a year, and you go, how good can she be? Never saw her show and never will. Yeah, but how good can she be? I mean, all she cares about is how much money she's making. You don't make that kind of money and be. I want the guy with the crushed hat with the press thing in his <laughs> grin. You know? Right? Those guys. Don't you want Ed Morrow with a cigarette? You know, hanging yeah. out. I don't want some woman who, in between breaks, a makeup woman comes over and touches her up. You know, I I don't want that. I want news, and you just don't get it anymore. Were you, were you a Walter Cronkite fan, Alan? Oh, yeah. Oh, was was, yeah. Everybody was. Right? Everybody yeah. was. As long and you as didn't know Walter, what his political leanings were. As long, you know, right, he, didn't, didn't care, <laughs> right? As yeah. long as Walter was there, 
Okay. Yeah. Everything was fine with the world. What did LBJ say when he well, decided? With to Vietnam, run? he said, "I when he decided not to run again, he said once I lost Walter Cronkite, right. I lost everybody." Yeah. Right. Well, you know, Ooh. during a commercial break, Walter gets a phone call from the Texas White House that LBJ had just died. Mm. Yeah. But he broke that story because one of LBJ's people called him. And it was during a commercial break that he takes the phone call. Wow. He breaks it on the air. That's, yeah, man. And nonpartisan. They were nonpartisan. They just reported the news as it was. They were partisan. Uh, well, Cronkite had politics, but he oh, never, sure. saw, you never saw it. That, yes, right. exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could deduce that he was a liberal-hearted guy, but you know, he never talked about it. Well, the thing is, is that, that you know, you really don't want to know uh, what the politics of your news person is. You just want to know that he's reporting it accurately. You know? Well, well rather, rather was like this uh, in that interview. Like, I mean, I think back to how much fun everybody made of George W. Bush at the time, but the way that Dan Rather talked that night, you never would have known that the, a, a, a large majority of people thought that the president was a buffoon. The way that he spoke, he was, you know, you never would have known that. And, and, I think there's I think there's some wisdom in that. And, and would you have it. known that the drunk was America's mayor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. man. Talk about would, you hired then. a good PR company, too, Rudy. Yeah, that guy has fallen so far, it's unbelievable. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the same people. <laughs> right. I never liked him. I don't even think he felt like he was always a jerk. Lamb, Lamb didn't. Yeah, always was. Yeah. You know, and you know the thing about with the mob, he was. I don't want to call him mobbed up because I have no proof of that. But the mobsters, the Gambino cops and stuff, they would give him Alex and me, the little schlubs. So and then he would leave alone the heads of the mob. Sure, sure. A woman I know. Used to date Bernard Carrick, who was the police police chief, commissioner, police commissioner of New York, and, before he went to jail, and Giuliani's uh, business partner, and mm. Giuliani Partners. Uh, and uh, I said to her, "Are they corrupt?" She says, "You don't even want to know the beginning of it." <laughs> you know, I mean, these are two of the most this this mayor uh, Giuliani is one of the most corrupt people alive, alive. Yeah. You know, to run a city, it, it's really it's really terrible. And you remember when he tried to stop the election in November that year, when the die was coming out of his head? Oh, because God. only I can run the, after nine eleven. Only I yeah. can. Yeah. Run he wanted the city. to run the third term. Yes. Yeah. No, he just wanted to cancel the election. Yeah. No, oh, okay. But then you had, Bloom you had Bloomberg who got a third term. Mm -hmm. he paid for it. Yeah, he paid for it. Exactly. <laughs> so did Cuomo pay for it. Yeah. Well, we're, I'm thinking do. today we he's don't. He's on have, a long vacation. Is he on a long vacation? Mm -hmm. Did he, that, that? That's what he's where he's gone. That's what they he's said. He's in the Hamptons. He's in the Hamptons. <laughs> he, he's somewhere, but I just you, we're not hearing from him. He's no. not saying a no. word. I imagine at some point he will emerge and start talking about the situation. I don't think unless he, she really screws up, the current governor will keep the job if she wants it. Uh, she's not very good. She's terrible. No, but she's not controversial, right? So yeah. well, yeah, she's not. Yeah, she's from Buffalo. No, but I don't like the way <laughs> she's taken every opportunity to diss Cuomo. Yeah, no, it's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, she well, she says I'm not going to run this state by press conference. All right, well, shut the fuck up then, and don't calm us down. I'm you running. Go panic, and you can, you know, the one thing Cuomo did was calm us down. Yeah, right. you can say a lot about him, but those press conferences really helped. Those press yes. conferences got us through it all. We watched it every. Unless you were 90 day. years old in a nursing home, right? No. <laughs> well, I'm almost 90 years old and I'm almost in a nursing home. Okay. <laughs> we, watched it every day. we watched it every day. Yesterday I went down to get myself a new iPad and they said, uh, what's your, uh, what's your uh, uh, pin number for some bank account? I couldn't remember it for the mm. life of me because every time I have to type it in, 
I type it in where there are letters on each of the buttons and I know what the word is that I'm typing. Uh, and they handed me this thing and it just had numbers on it. And I couldn't remember what the numbers were. God, am I getting old. Tell us all, is it, is it checky? Is that, your, is that the pin? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's yeah, well, I mean, imagine if you, uh, you get uh, arrested and you get put in jail. You don't remember anybody's phone number anymore. <laughs> I don't, right? it's all I don't know Marjorie's phone right. number. Who, who's gonna be my who's gonna be my one call? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know yours ends yeah. in one three one one. Yeah, but that's, that's it. All I know. You know, and I know the last three of your four of yours because I have to go down and get your drugs every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's about it for this week, folks. God, mm. you know. Oh, wow. Uh, I hope I was in good enough shape. I, I've decided I've got to stop taking this drug I've been taking because it makes me forget stuff, ah. simple stuff, you know. Next huh. week, well, next week on the show, we can talk about our brunch on Sunday. Oh, oh yeah, we're going to do brunch on oh, Sunday. Are you really? That's great. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And Jeff, you and your wife got to get down here too. Absolutely. Right. I didn't even know about this. Yeah. Oh, come on oh. down. Come on down, join us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, it, it's great having you all here. It's a nice group okay. of people. I love talking with you. It's just like a nice little chit chat, uh, which we'd probably do even if we didn't do it on the air. You know, it's just, yeah. uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you. Thank you to Edward Berger, to Steve Bender, to Jeff Stein, to Rick Sheckman, to Charlie Wallace, to whoever that broad is down there. Uh, and uh, to uh, Len LaFrisco. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you for watching this uh, thing and everybody just wave goodbye and I'll stop the whole damn thing. Okay. <laughs> all right. Here nice we go. Okay. Stay